Good morning, dear friends. And greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord has given us another day. We have a lot of things to do, places to go, business to be accomplished. But as Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ, our first priority is to glorify God in our lives, in all our dealings and in our friendship and relationship. Through it all, we must bring glory and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. People must be attracted to Jesus. And today's meditation is centered around or based on Hebrews chapter 11. And um, I am going to take a short walk through the chapter with you. And let us together discover what kind of faith the men of this chapter possessed. This chapter is uh, uh, heroes of faith, men and women who accomplished great things for God and for themselves. And each of the men in this chapter were men of vision and decision. They all saw the vision, they counted the cost, and they made their decisions and they acted on their decision. Chapter 11 of Hebrews demonstrate. Now this is what I'm going to tell you. We are going to discover together. It demonstrates the nature of the only kind of faith that is acceptable to God and acceptable before God. No other faith. A faith triumphant in the worst of circumstance and situation. And I am going to list, and as we walk together, these are the things that we will discover. The, the quality of this faith, the, the, the beauty of this faith. Number one, it is a faith that believes in spiritual realities. I would like you to listen very carefully because I will only list and give you the verses that talks about it. It is a faith that believes in spiritual realities. Verse one. And number two, it is a faith that leads to righteousness. Verse number four. Number three. It is a faith that seeks God. Verse six. Number five. It's a faith that believes in his goodness. Verse six again in the same verse. Number five, it is a faith that has confidence in his word. Verses seven and eleven. Number six, it is a faith that obeys his command. Verse eight. Number seven, it is a faith that regulates life on his promises. Verses 13 and verse, verse 13 and verse 39. <clears throat> Number eight, it is a faith that rejects the spirit of this present evil age. Verse 13. And number nine, it is a faith that seeks a heavenly home. Verses 14 to 16. Number 10. It is a faith that perseveres in testing. Verses 17 to 19. Number 11. It is a faith that blesses the next generation. 
verse 21. Number 12, it is a faith that refuses sin's pleasures. Verse 25. Number 13, it is a faith that endures persecution. Verse 27. Number 14. It is a faith that performs mighty acts or righteousness. Verses 33 to 35. Number 15. It is a faith that suffers for God. Verses 25 and 35 to 38. It is a faith, number 16, it is a faith that does not return to the country they had left. That is the world. Verses 15 and 16. Consider this accomplishment of a faith, a faith which originates in the love of God. And that is why it is so strong. Steadfast. And my friends, this is the kind of faith that you and I must possess. Any other kind of faith will not be stable. And the reason we waver in our faith is that we are not sincere and serious about having such an overcoming, victorious, triumphant faith. And that is the only kind of faith that God accepts. And so I pray for you and for myself. Let us pray for each other. And this is the faith that must be displayed by all disciples of Jesus Christ. Everywhere. And this is the overcoming faith. This is the faith that overcomes. And let me just give you an illustration, a story. A young man newly recruited into the Coast Guard in the United States of America, was called out early in his recruitment to a difficult assignment. A great storm had arisen and a ship was signaling its distress. And as the men began to getting into their boat and move the big boat to the rescue, the young man, frightened by the fierceness of the storm, cried out to the captain and he said, We will never come back. And the captain replied this is what the captain said in reply we don't have to come back but we do have to go out and that means you are willing to pay the price My friends, this is my meditation for you this morning. Think about it. It is short. But if you have taken down these 16 qualities of uh, the triumphant overcoming faith and meditate on it, you will find that this is the faith that brought Abraham out of his country and his people. And this is the faith that enabled Isaac and Jacob to continue the legacy 
of their father Abraham. And thus became worthy for the title of the patriarchs of the children of Israel. And this is the kind of faith that Moses exercised when he denied the pleasures of Egypt and the privilege of uh, having a, a kingdom and a crown and throne. But he denied all, came out, rather than enjoying the pleasures of a sin and of this world. He chose to suffer shame and reproach with his people, the Jews. This is the faith. And this is the faith that enabled the Old Testament prophets and others, even women like Esther and Ruth, to, 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 to make their decision. And when they made the decision, they had no hope of being alive and living a normal life. Whether it is Ruth, the only thing that she could look forward was a heart life with a mother-in-law. And yet she said, do not urge me to leave you. My mother, I will go with you. And where you go, I go. And where you live, I will live. Where you will die, I will die. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. And it is that, this is the faith that enabled her. And how about Esther? What a decision she made. Going to see the king, though the king was her own husband, the law those days was anyone who getting into the throne room of the king for any purpose, whether it is his wife or concubines or whoever he or she may be, there is only one law, kill. And that was the decision Esther had to make when Mordecai sent the message. Or the fate that the Israelites or the Jews are going to face. Total annihilation. And what did Esther say? You go and fast and pray, every one of you, for three days. From the oldest to the youngest. I and my maid also will fast and pray. And then on the third day I will go. And then she said, if I perish, I perish. That is the faith. And then you know the story. And this is the kind of faith they exercised. Whether it was the prophets, they came out. And my brothers and sisters, this is the faith that the apostles had after the day of Pentecost, which enabled all of them to travel to foreign countries and gave their life. All of them became martyrs except John, the disciple. And our early fathers, this is the faith of our fathers, which is still living. And let us be possessors of this faith and glorify God and be an example for others, an encouragement for others. It is a faith that triumphs. God bless you as you determine to be true to God no matter what the cost, you will be willing to pay the price. And may the Lord enable all of us and the Holy Spirit strengthens us to be true to him who has called us. Lord, we thank you that you will be with us. You will enable us and you will give us your grace 
to possess such faith and remain true to you, O God, and willing to pay the price and remain loyal to you. Thank you for enabling us. Everyone who listened to this shall be blessed with such faith. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, my friends. Have a wonderful day today and glorify the Lord. Amen.